Hi, I hope you guys have a good morning and not to join with like that. In this video, we will be covering IE first and what the alternative should be. Because in my mind, and I'll back this up, Infinity Edge first is a crime. And getting away with it is a bit illegal. Um, so just starting off this video here for people that aren't really interested in watching any further. Don't go Infinity Edge first. Go Blade the Ring King. But now... For those interested, we will go deeper into this. I'm going to explore other champions, I will compare some things, and I will explain and make this all make sense, and then explain to you and show why this is the case. But before we begin properly, I hope you guys are having a good morning, evening, night, whichever one you like that. I think I might have said it, I don't even know. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's get into it. And the first thing we're going to address here is... Infinity Edge lacks attack speed, right? So the problem with Twitch, and this will, again, I'm going to try and make this short, but it is going to be long by, like, default. So I'm not going to show any clips. I could show champions and stuff. Like, if you have little knowledge about those things, then just feel free to ask me in the comments. Or join my stream and ask there. I'll do my best to explain. But to begin, Twitch has no auto-attack reset. His ult can miss. So when you invest in a lot of attack damage and you miss you lose more. Does that make sense? So, when you have a lot of AD, and your auto attack miss, you lose a lot more than if you have attack speed, and you miss one. Because you are more likely to hit the next one anyway, right? Maybe. I mean, sometimes you miss three times in a row. But that is just one reason for it. You have windows in the game that is based on time. So, like, you might have a fight window of, like, three seconds. And then you miss one, you only get one more auto attack, and that's it. Like, champions move fast, they dodge them. Like, there are so many variations here that we can go into that just makes it kind of, like, sandstorm. I'm not saying that Infinity Edge is bad, by the way, first. Like, it is definitely, like, situational, and it has, this, like, it is viable. Like, it's not completely bad. But, hopefully as we continue, um, it'll be more clear. So, second, a lot of champions have other mechanics that they can use or, like, rely on to, like, get something more out of Infinity Edge. Like, take Caitlyn as an example. She has her nets, she has her traps. Like, she can utilize Infinity Edge very good. And other champions, such as Jinx, as an example here, she doesn't even build that, because she can go Kraken or something first, so she can go Infinity Edge. And she has other advantages, like range, right? Like, Twitch for license is old, but I can miss. Or it doesn't rely on ult. But it's still nice. So with that said, um there is one thing that is kind of important to also keep in mind here, and also that will solidify solidify and show I like even here Jinx is going into the edge first out of five thousand games. I will I intended looking at Master Plus when I'm gonna show this. And the problem is sample size of course, but still it's not too bad. Like, Crack and Slay can be utilized by Jinx a lot better. Other champions like Jane is obviously going to want, like, Infinity Edge or Collector or something, maybe, or uh, maybe some Lethality. It depends. Uh, but most of the time, most champions like Attack Speed. And Twitch isn't really any different. But then you have other champions that has auto attack resets, or like Draven with his W. Like, they can utilize AD a lot more because they can get away with it because they have things that, like, help that, or, like, back them up. But Twitch is kind of weird. So, with all of this said, we'll be going into all these champions and comparing some things soon. But first, I just want to show you guys something here. That might catch some by surprise. Some might not be caught by surprise. And this is Twitch with one item exclusively. Like, I know we look here and we see 66% win rate on this build here in Master Plus. And we look at these builds here, and they all have positive win rate, right? Like, wow, everything looks dandy. But the problem is, one item. Some games, you will end up having, like, only one item, two items. And that is a big problem. And as you can see here, Infinity Edge first is only being built 35 times here. Or, uh, yeah, 35 times. And uh, Blade of the Rune King is being picked more, but it also has a higher win rate. And... The reason why this is kind of important to look at is what we will be covering now. And this is kind of where the fun like mind game comes into play. Um, and where some experience might be nice. And basically what this is, is to um, cover your weaknesses. 
right? So Twitch, I mean, this is more clear in MO Plus actually, but we'll go to the Master Plus one after. So as you can see here, right? Like Twitch starts off with this win rate and then it plummets to 20 and then he goes up again. Because Twitch is kind of like a teamfight champion who doesn't have anything but his auto attacks going for him to like help him for anything. And he relies on like kind of like macro plays like dragons and stuff and trying to like wipe out entire teams with his ult. So doing some sort of impact, right? Uh, another example, I'm just looking at Ash here. She's going to function differently because even if she's not that strong, she still has utility in her kit, like a stun and everything like that. So like you're going to see here, like in this same point that Twitch is that, uh, Jinx is not, I mean, Ash is not, right? And that is kind of why you don't want to go with these items early game. Because you want to cover your bases, right? This is your weakness here. This is the weak point. Like, sure, if you're ahead and you're like Giga Smurfing, like Infinity Edge might be nice. But most of the time now, you are going to be playing the stalemate thing. And then you want to be as impactful as possible, like, as impactful as possible around this mark here. Because throughout the entire game, like, as later stage into the game you go, of course, you're going to perform. Like, you look at all these items here and you can compare them to, I don't know, four item Ash builds. And they're not going to be even close to the Twitch win rates. So like it really doesn't matter if you go balk or whatever like the, the four item spike is still good like i really love the even like collect the infinity edge can be nice like layer in the game because you get basic attack speed scaling all of this but then again you can look at the time here right so like you usually finish your boots and first item around like 13 minutes as you can see here 13 on average like your first item is complete at around 13 minutes uh, boots is completed around that same time and two items is at roughly around 20 minutes right so that's kind of like where you get that weakness point as i mentioned earlier um and then as the game progresses we're going to look here when you get the four items that is roughly around like 30 minutes and you can see at that point twitch is already seen at 55 percent whereas you can compare that to someone like ash uh, which doesn't even touch 55 percent so that is one of the like main arguments I have, other than the fact that Infinity Edge just feels bad and the impact of like missing an auto attack with your ult uh, with Infinity Edge and missing is much greater greater than if you miss with Blade of the Rune King. Um, so even though it, like your damage might be higher, like just showing here an example, uh, we'll go to the items again. Two items, like I I think this is probably one of the better ones because if you are first investing into like heavy AD. You don't want to diversify, right? Like if you have little resources, you don't want to diversify and buy like a thousand stocks and you might as well just put all your money in the same basket. And that is kind of how it applies here. You have the attack speed, AD, all of these things are like different baskets. Like on hit on like the Blade of the Rune King is one basket. So like if you like go Blade of the Rune King, going um, Lord Doms is like another basket again because then you're investing in the Blade of the Rune King. Like two items, I definitely I do think that something like collector infinity edge can be good. Like because you just get to that point, and then you've put so much AD and just invested in that. So like your auto attacks will just have value by default. Because if you hit one, you're gonna hit for quite a lot. Um, but most of the time, I think you're going to be better off just going the standard like blade drinking hurricane because you want to be useful. Like you're most of the time, on average, you're not gonna be one v nine again in twenty minute mark. So like your best average performance is going to be with this build here. It is when you're going to be like on average, like the most useful, like regardless of like your money, right? Like sure, if you're really far ahead and you just like go even like Blade Rune King PD, like of course you can have a lot of impact. But again, uh, it doesn't really matter. I just think it's good to just like kind of like play around this window dip here and then play around where you're weakest and then just figure out like how to optimize that window there and then at the end of the day like on average you're going to perform better um, than most champions if you make it past that point so that is like the goal here you want to make it past that point right and on average i think blade the ring king hurricane or other items will have the most success with that uh, of course you can see these items here being built right but it doesn't say the time when it gets finished it just says the amount of games Mm. so one thing you can do to like see it's just how it progresses right so you have Blade Ring King Infinity Edge Hurricane uh, that doesn't really make sense uh, because there's more games here than there is with two items uh, so 
so that doesn't really add up. But usually you can see them like path down and change. So yeah, that is basically the window here. And the fun exercise with this here is you can look at all the champions and imagine like what how they will perform and it will kind of like just go again here. Like Caitlyn is going to uh, excel a little game because if they get ahead, so like they might be taking a dip here, right? And then later the scale again. Uh, Cogmore, right? Like he can be used for you even if he's behind behind because he has like tools as you can see here. And he actually kind of like tends to fall off. Uh, but he's not like low by any means. But Kogma does fall off late. Mm. Doesn't necessarily sound like it, but when everyone gets so bold and everything, like Kogma does feel a bit less under, like more underwhelming than not. And like other champions that kind of like similar to Twitch, or like someone that can fall really far behind the Samira, right? So like again, this window here, and then if you make it past that, you're fine. Which is why getting good early game items can do this. But again, it's situational, right? Like, of course, some games you're going to play and you have, like, a certain support to, like, you against certain champions, then you're fine. But I do personally think also that if you are going to go Infinite Edge and go for this, I do think you might actually get more value by just going Hill Blades. Um, simply because of just, as I said, the attack speed. Um, it is really noticeable. Uh, how low it is sometimes, like I've had situations that have just been so awful and it literally just made me like fume in anger because I despised it so much. Like I got like three auto attacks off in like 10 seconds because like people were like spacing me and running away and then I didn't get to do anything and it just, I just, I just felt like a pleb. So yeah. That is why, like again, like I, I don't mind the four item builds, like full like crit, like collector infinity edge can be great, but I, I played during King Hurricane also has some viability of course. Uh, another build that I will be trying a bit more now in the future is play during King Queen, so I do see a lot of potential with that one still. I did see some other people have success with that too. And for those that watch me do know that I've had success with that in the past, as it is the build that I did play last play uh, for the most part. As I did find it the most fun. <coughs> mm. Other than that, I'm not sure, really sure what else to add. But basically, you are going to be way less useless with these items here, not to mention the build path being a lot nicer. Like, again, like it is matchup dependent, but just on average. Like, on average, Blade Ring King will perform better than Infinity Edge. If you are falling behind, don't like delay yourself so far behind and just like, I'm gonna get Infinity Edge collector, I'm just I'm gonna pop every item. Like, you need to get there. That is an important part. Right. And with all of these things in mind, like I just generally do think that um, Blade of Winking is better than Infinity Edge. It's going to feel nicer. You might not get the big hits and like one tap and I like, feel like you're doing as much damage as you do feel with Infinity Edge. And I do feel you like most of you will know that I advocate or like I spoke about Infinity Edge Hurricane, like where you go BF Sword Hurricane and then finish Infinity Edge. Like it can work, but again, it becomes to be awkward. I do also think that like Infinity Edge PD can be really good, and I'm sure we can see like at least one example of that here, even if it is some masters. Uh, no, we don't actually see one. But yeah, there are a lot of options. I'm not saying it's dead in the war like bad. It can work, but on average, Blade Ring King will outperform. Like of course, this build here will have will have high win rate because it is like statistically like when you get to that point, it is going to be better. But it's it's important to get to that point as well right but you don't want to butcher your build too much and i'll go over these things again like later but that's for now i'm just i just wanted to cover this kind of like this dip here and explain how like blade ring can help influence that and like help you get past this point here right and that is very important you want to get past this dip because late game in most cases you are going to be useful and you are going to be able to do plays and like perform and actually be useful because a lot of the time Twitch can be very useless. Right? Like <laughs> Infinity Edge and then you hit someone with Tabai and you're dealing no damage. The Blade Ring King Hurricane, some attack speed. It'll feel better, trust me. And now we're seeing like people go away from Frozen Heart, like it's not being built that much. It's like just in general, like it's a lot nicer. So yeah. This is just like <laughs> I've tried to like figure out ways of like saying this show. But I feel like it's very hard to condense this information while also like sharing thoughts. So 
Uh, it ends up being like a 15 minute video, but I hope you guys don't mind. For those that watch all the way through here, hope you guys continue to have a good morning, evening, night, visual, and visual like that. And yeah, take care. And again, just a cool exercise. Just look at champions, look at the dips. Like it's it's fun, it's interesting. You can imagine just based on the knowledge you have of the game, you can say like, ah, oh, Ash is gonna perform. Uh, hmm. I don't know who else. Like Kaiser is actually surprising. Like she hits an early game spike, right? So like even early game, she will have hit like a decent spike to the point where she shouldn't have that dip. And you see that here. She doesn't really get that dip in any of the elos, right? Because she spikes very early, and the spikes are good. So she probably has like the l least spike, like dip, out of like every single lady of ADC. But that doesn't necessarily mean that she's the best ADC. It just means that she's like more useful, regardless of the situation, in comparison to like other ADCs. Like even Jinx, you will see. Where's Kaisa? Kaisa. Is this Masters on both? No, this is Emerald. Let's put that Master. Sorry, I'm just going a bit more, but we'll end soon. Right. You can see Jinx's curve here is even higher. Uh, and even another thing that is interesting to look at is just the general completion time of first item. The Jinx here completes Infinity Edge on F14. And Twitch completes F13. Huh. Boots average around 10, boots average around 12. Yeah, you can see here like three items 25 minutes, uh, three items 24, 25. Actually, roughly around the same. I'm surprised by that. Actually, I would expect Jinx to have a higher farm and then completing items earlier on average. I would expect Jinx's CS to be higher than Twitch. But yeah, there are a lot of things you can look at, but for now, I just wanted to cover this here. This weak point and why Infinity Edge can be a crime to get away with because sometimes you will just be useless with it, and that's it. But you won't have the same feeling of uselessness with Blade of the Ring King, and that's a fact. Take care, peace.